good morning good morning all welcome you welcome you all with the blessings of almighty holy trio and our revered secretary swami ji maharaj i welcome all the participants to join us in this webinar today right we have around 800 participants we kindly request you to cooperate in this regard and kindly participants do not share your screen because we have already set a plan so that the resource person alone can share the screen so please bear with us now i request our principal dr g subramani manna to welcome the guests most rege our secretary swami arshan ji maharaj dr m jagadish the organizing secretary of this webinar dear faculty members dr sivasankaran dr ayyappan and all other faculty members not the staff of our institutions dr dinesh and the participants over the globe good morning to one and all my pranams to our secretary maharaj so today the international webinar on a bundle of tools for online teaching the world is undergoing a tremendously a disaster at times the effects of novel corona virus are evident across the globe irrespective of geographical boundaries everyone is denied of accessing their normal lives the students worldwide are deprived of having access to their classrooms for more than 4 to 5 months this very pathetic situation that anybody could think of the story of human race is definitely the story of their struggles and adventures over centuries as teachers we have to flexible enough to change our education system to cope up with the situation not risking the future of learners thus the definition of teaching at it means that being changing nowadays that even before as a safer and intelligent choice online teaching and learning are getting promoted in this pandemic situation being teachers we should equip ourselves to meet the demand of the present new normals in education the webinar envisages the familiarize some of the online tools that helps you to get acquainted with new models of virtual teaching learning environment once again i congratulate the uh, organizing secretary of this webinar dr jagadish and i also wholeheartedly welcome all the participants throughout the globe to participate in this webinar continuously our college of education is organizing different types of webinars on different topics i also congratulate all the staff members so be safe and be safe for learning so thank you very much for one and all thank you I would like to introduce our today's chief guest for the session. Dr. Morgan S has been working as a faculty member at the School of Computing, Information and Mathematical Sciences, University of South Pacific, Fiji. Earlier he has worked for universities in Saudi Arabia, Amrita and Karunya in India, and he also also worked in the software giant Infosys Limited, India. He has more than two decades of experience in academics, industry and research. 
to his credit he has successfully supervised six doctoral candidates published three books of international repute 10 book chapters and more than 50 research papers at international level he has a phd in computer science masters in computer technology sorry masters in computer cognition technology both from the university of mysore and a bachelor's in computer science and engineering from bharati dasan university his areas of research include intelligent computing machine learning computer graphics and vision dr morgan organized to serve organized and served as a program committee member at various international conferences that are published by ieee springer etc he is also a senior member of ieee and a member of acs dr morgan evaluates computer science programs of various universities in usa and other countries for their accreditation as a programmer program evaluator at abet he has a rich experience in online teaching and learning systems he is also instrumental in implementing learning management systems at various institutions so at this juncture i would like to welcome our resource person dr morgan s because at this uh, difficult times this would be a very good opt topic for which all the uh, stream faculties we have faculties from engineering arts and science pharmacy even we have school teachers uh, who have joined here so this will be a good opportunity for us to learn now i request dr morgan s to take over the session will be joining at the vote of thanks thank you mohan sir yeah. kindly you can present your screen sir yeah. very good morning uh, to all the participants uh, thanks for all of you to uh, join during this uh, uh, pandemic time to watch uh, uh, approximately about an hour of uh, bundle of tools for online teaching first of all my um, Thanks to thanks uh, to the organizer uh, Dr. M. Jagdish, who has been in. Oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Sorry. Please resume the presentation. Just click resume the presentation. Uh, I think I did it. Did I not? Let me. In Google. In Google Meet. Yeah. All right. I did that. Yes. My screen. Thank you. And your audible is little low, sir. You can just increase your audio. All right. Uh, Volume. Could, could you uh, see my screen? Uh, is it better now? Uh, the audio. I don't hear anything from your side. Um. Oh, that's great. Okay, so I'm getting a reply from the uh, participants that it is better audible. Okay, that's good. Uh, you know, these are all some of the words that uh, has become very popular now these days. Am I audible? am i visible is it clear is it audible right so these these words have become very popular now these uh, during this pandemic uh right so uh, let me uh, thank uh, dr m jagdish who has uh, uh, organized uh, this and he is uh, been so instrumental in uh, uh, fixing uh, this duration uh, though i'm a little occupied with my uh, semester grading uh, also i thank uh, Uh, Dr. G. Subramaniam, uh, who is the principal of the uh, Ramakrishna College, um, for welcoming me to this uh, webinar. All right. So before uh, uh, taking too much of time, let me get into the topic. So I have uh, about thirty-five slides uh, for uh, today's presentation. All right. So if there is anything that you feel in between, like uh, if there is any trouble in video audio. uh please stop me and i also have shared my uh, youtube uh, live stream uh, links those who are unable to join or those who wish to uh, see from the youtube uh, you can see a better quality um, and uh, i see currently about uh, 45 people are online um, 
please join in the video stream and you will be able to uh, see a better quality uh, streaming, right? Okay, so let me uh, start what is going to be the content here. Uh, first of all, we should understand uh, why we are here uh, at this junc juncture uh, of time uh, and uh, what is the need for us to uh, participate in this uh, webinar, right? Uh, we are also going to talk about the challenges for the teachers during this pandemic time. Uh, and then I'll be uh, talking a little bit about uh, a concept called e-moderation, which is not uh, new. It has been introduced uh, 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 quite a while ago, uh, which clearly talks about uh, the struggles that uh, the present day students are facing because of this uh, pandemic and because of the sudden introduction to the online uh, teaching tools. And then uh, the core topic of uh, the uh, uh, webinar is um, the tools that we are going to talk about is that classroom management tools, content creation tools, uh, assessment tools, uh, communication tools, and uh, finally I'll be uh, giving you some tools that are very handy in case if you miss um, uh, any of these uh, series of tools. And also I'll end up with uh, recommending a series of tools that uh, uh, any institution can uh, go with or any uh, uh, department or a school can go with a set of tools to uh, start the online teaching which could be cost effective and uh, resource effective. Right, so why we are here? Uh, it's, it's quite obvious that uh, the world has been uh, facing a very uh, uh, tremendous trouble in, uh, because of these uh, uh, pandemic due to the COVID-19, uh, uh, suddenly everyone started uh, talking about the online classes and the tools. Uh, I mean, that is going to be the topic of uh, today. If you see that, these, these are not the tools that are uh, existing only now, or they are, they are just, uh, uh, you know, introduced only now. They have been, uh, you know, available quite a while ago. But then those tools, the usage of those tools have become uh, very high during this time uh, because of uh, the remote and online uh, teaching. So I can tell you from my point of view, uh, from Fiji, uh, it started as early as uh, the second week of March when the first case was identified. Suddenly everyone uh, went into the lockdown. The government ordered the lockdown and then uh, the cases were increasing day by day. And about uh, 14 days of uh, lockdown, uh, there were about uh, 18 cases in total. Slowly, uh, the cases have uh, uh, come down, um, no international travels. But then uh, after a month, uh, after 45 days, and then, you know, the cases have uh, come down. After 60 days, almost nothing, uh, zero cases, zero death. So what happened now uh, recently that all the uh, restrictions have been lifted. So this is one of the countries where there is no restrictions at all in the sense we have little restrictions in terms of gathering uh, people more not more than 100 people and still uh, there's a late li late night curfew but other than that uh, people are quite normal uh, as a university um, and this is one of the uh, largest universities in the south pacific uh, it's called the university of the south pacific which is um, uh, spread across uh, 13 uh, island countries uh, uh, all these island countries, uh, there is no uh, coronavirus. I mean, uh, one or two cases were found, but then uh, now all are zero cases. But then we completely went online. It is not new to this university because there was already an existing platform uh, where we have been teaching online. We used to have two uh, modes. One is the face-to-face, -face, the other one is the online mode. Online mode is for uh, the uh, countries which are remote, the other uh, island countries where the students cannot come here. So there are campuses uh, of the uh, USP where, um, uh, you know, we offer the courses through online mode. So we have a very uh, stable platform. We have utilized that to offer even uh, for the face-to-face -face students. So for all others, there's a paradigm shift, right? So the, the, you, mean you have not expected this shift. Uh, I mean, the universities in the West have been already uh, going for the online degrees, online, uh, you know, programs, but then gradually. But suddenly this uh, pandemic has uh, triggered it in a way that all the traditional teaching have uh, become online uh, teaching. So there is an urge to learn the technology uh, for all the teachers, right? Whether you are a computer science person or whether you are a completely uh, non-computer science person, you are forced 
by, uh, I mean, whether you are willing or unwilling, you are forced to learn the technology which supports this online um, teaching. So ironically, uh, it is not going to stop, all right? In the sense, it's not, the, not about the COVID, it's about uh, the online teaching. It's not going to stop. People are going to uh, see mo more of online teaching in the future. So you should be able to uh, accustomed to this online teaching mode. So the focus is changing from the infrastructure to the knowledge base. So uh, you probably might be knowing, uh, you're working in a lot of uh, different private institutions, you might be knowing how uh, much importance your management or other managements used to give it for the infrastructure in terms of the buildings. Uh, I mean, the least importance was given, uh, uh, unfortunately, it is not uh, intentional, unfortunately or unknowingly, the uh, least importance was given to the knowledge base of the uh, faculty members and the teachers. But then now, uh, there is a realization that uh, the knowledge base and uh, the, the teachers who are the backbone of the teaching industry has been appreciated for handling the online classes, uh, engaging the students online, right? So we used to see a lot of uh, news through uh, the, the, the uh, media that how the teachers are engaging with available resources. Right, so uh, that's the uh, focus now. So you should be able to uh, have the knowledge of all these uh, tools. And of course, we always uh, feel that our students outsmart uh, the teachers. Uh, any tool that you learn, particularly in terms of the assessment, uh, you should know uh, how these tools are useful in um, uh, benefiting the uh, uh, good students and not uh, benefiting the students who are uh, smart in uh, malpractices in, in terms of the cheating and other things, right? So the challenges here when you go for uh, the online teaching is that the learning curve. So you are asked to start the online teaching from the day one uh, without even knowing uh, what the online teaching is all about or how the tools are going to work, right? So the learning curve involved in understanding those tools uh, uh, that that varies depending on your uh, uh, you know prerequisite I mean pre I mean existing knowledge or your understandability about how to use these tools and the methods to uh, you know adapt to all those things and then uh, the challenge is in terms of the assessment how you are going to assess your students in what kind of uh, examination you are going to conduct the most easiest way is the uh, multiple choice but then you cannot always stick on to uh, the uh, multiple choice so you need to uh, test and um, um, the other way of assessing your uh, students as well, particularly the courses like uh, the math and science. Uh, the data entry and analytics. So probably some of the senior faculty members may be good at traditional classes, uh, but then when it comes to the online classes, they may struggle a lot to enter the data quickly. Uh, if you have uh, a lot of students, say for example, hundreds of students in your class, you will find a lot of difficulty in entering your data into the system. So that data entry and getting the analytics, right, about uh, how the students performed in your class, for example, taking as simple as a log reports, the, rep uh, the reports about a particular activity, uh, how many students have participated in an, in an online examination, how long did they take, all these analytics uh, take some time for you to uh, get to know and then engaging the students online. This is the most challenging uh, even I have faced. Uh, when we deliver the uh, courses online, we do not know how the students are on the other side. Even now I see a lot of participants in my uh, session. I still do not know whether you guys, I mean, sorry, uh, you teachers are uh, listening uh, or you have simply connected and uh, you are not listening. I do not know actually, that's a fact, uh, unless there is an interactive session. But if there is a large group of audiences, just like uh, your uh, uh, this this particular session, where hundreds of participants are there, uh, you you have a very limited scope for making it very interactive. And then uh, that's what I said uh, about the uh, interaction. And then how to be uh, smarter than uh, the smartest of our students? So this is a very challenging question because you find a way. For example, uh, I introduce a plagiarism tool in my uh, assignments. The students know how this plagiarism tool works. They try to find out the loopholes of this uh, tool, and then they try to outsmart that. They just try to, uh, uh, you know, rephrase some uh, sentences and try to see that if the uh, you know, the plagiarism percentage is uh, similarity percentage is coming down. So they always work on it. Okay, so we cannot stop it. The students, of course, they are very smart. <clears throat> 
Right, so let's try to understand about a concept called EU moderation, which was introduced by uh, Gilly uh, Salman. Just search for uh, Gilly Salman uh, uh, five stage model. Uh, this is not new. Uh, she has introduced a long back, about a decade back, where th there's a five stage. It's like uh, going up in a mountain. You cannot just reach the top of the mountain in just one step. You need to go slowly up. So this is what's happening with the uh, online teaching and learning. So uh, to get uh, uh, you know get to that level of understanding the tools are uh, get to the basic learning itself will take some time because of the total uh, change in the uh, you know the platform of uh, online teaching. So it all starts from uh, um, uh, you know <clears throat> the basic things where the digital tools right that's the first step where you get access to those tools. So whenever you say some tools, the, the students and the participants should get the access to those tools. That's, that's most important. Uh, that's why most of the people prefer the web-based tools, because you don't have to install anything. The students might be using uh, any platform, Windows, Linux, or uh, uh, Mac, or even the mobile uh, devices like Android. So your uh, tools must support all these uh, types of devices. So the first one is the access where you get used to uh, the tools and the online environments. All right, so um, you try to understand and uh, try to take the advantages of uh, the online courses. That's the first step. The second step is getting socialized uh, online, right? So the participants start interacting with each other and uh, the facilitator, that is the teachers, and uh, they form a learning community. Right. That's what is more important. Uh, this can be formed in terms of many ways, depending on the tools. For example, in Moodle, we have a forum where uh, you have uh, a closed uh, loop follow-up. In the sense, you can um, uh, uh, post a question and get the uh, answers from the students, and then you can give your own uh, summary on the replies that you have got from all your students. So that kind of socialization uh, is needed uh, That as a second step. The third one is the information exchange where the uh, group, you know, the, the groups that you f uh, form out of participants, they try to work together to complete tasks and participate uh, participate in the activities. So what this author says is that all the activities in the classroom, when you go online, they become the activities, right? So that's the uh, e-moderation activities. So here they grow and more uh, confident about their role in. Uh, uh, you know, the online teaching as an e-learner, they try to uh, build themselves as an e-learner. They learn uh, uh, from their own uh, pace and then try to gather the expertise and experience. And then the knowledge construction, that's the next step where uh, the group members have found their roles in the e-community and uh, have already adjusted. So they know how it works. Uh, they are familiar with uh, how to participate, how to learn. Right? So they are taking responsibility for their own learning. And uh, they help each other uh, also, the facilitator has now taken a uh, more uh, peripheral role in the sense he is not uh, a typical uh, teacher. He is only a guide. He is only a person who, uh, um, you know, participate only when there is a necessity, right? So that's what is happening at this knowledge construction uh, uh, stage. And then you have the development where the participants do not only learn, but also implement knowledge and experience from the course in their own work. So they try to uh, exhibit uh, how they uh, build their knowledges. So they're also capable of fine tuning uh, this knowledge uh, to suit their own areas of work. So that's the ultimate objective of uh, any teaching and learning. So this is what happens with uh, your uh, five-step process, uh, with uh, what is called as the e-moderation simply. There are a lot of works published by this uh, author and uh, based on this work actually, so if anyone is interested in the online uh, teaching, learning, and research, you can very well start working from this. All right, so uh, getting into the core of this topic, which is a list of uh, tools. So let me start with uh, the classroom management tools, okay? So in the sense, you're going to replicate what you're doing in your classroom uh, with an online platform. So there are certain tools that support um, uh, your online uh, teaching. So before I start, uh, I want to uh, request the online participants, uh, particularly in the YouTube, whoever it is there, uh, just 
click on the subscription button that will add some count to my uh, YouTube channel. This is only a request, okay? So uh, you can please uh, make a subscription and uh, I'll be sharing a lot of interesting- Morgan, Morgan sir, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, sir. Yeah? Just resume your screen sharing. Come again? Resume your screen sharing, sir. One of our participants has shared the screen. Oh, why now this I... is going again and again? Participants, a kind request, do not share your screen. It will be a disturbance to the resource person. Kindly cooperate. Thank you. All right. So please let me know if my... Actually, I see at the bottom that uh, stop sharing. So I assume that this uh, screen has already been shared. All right. Thanks for interrupting. Uh, so uh, please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. That will be helpful. And uh, go ahead, going ahead, you have the first tool as the Moodle. I'm sure most of the participants might have heard about the Moodle and uh, probably might be working in, in Moodle, right? So Moodle is a well-known uh, learning management uh, tool, which has been uh, in existence for almost uh, two decades. Uh, this is uh, open source and it's been uh, growing a very uh, large because you have a, a very good uh, community support which is uh, helping you to learn and uh, you know adapt to this uh, uh, online teaching learning uh, platform and this is uh, this community is uh, also helpful in developing this tool uh, it actually helps a large number of uh, users even when it was introduced uh, it was able to help about 50000 users at any time so it, uh, i mean the server is very stable and reliable and also it's very secure. So uh, unless you have a proper, uh, uh, you know, authentic entry, you will not be able to share your, uh, uh, you know, uh, your data or whatever you have in your uh, teaching tools. And then the learning curve is linear. So it's, uh, I mean, I would say that it's been improving, the user interface is improving. Uh, you will be uh, spending some time in learning the uh, basics of Moodle before you get used to it. So it can be even installed uh, for a small school uh, on a LAN. So when I was working uh, in India about seven years back, uh, approximately about yeah nine years back, uh, we didn't have a very uh, uh, um, a big configuration of uh, server, but then we just installed in a local machine with just i3 configuration uh, with a uh, Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, and PHP uh, uh, LAMP stack. And we were able to uh, use this Moodle for about say 1,000 students approximately at that time, and it was quite stable at that time, right? So now probably uh, all of you might be having uh, a typical server in your institution, so you can easily ask your IT uh, administrator to install this and configure it. It's not a, a big deal. It's about less than an hour. It can be installed and configured uh, to be used instantaneously. And uh, I mean, just to uh, know how far is uh, Moodle penetrated into Indian market, uh, I have taken this uh, chart recently. Uh, it, this is what it says. It's about uh, the market share in Moodle. I mean, in India for the Moodle is about, uh, say, 50%, slightly more than 50% compared to other tools like Canvas and Brightspaces. And you have uh, the next tool, which is the Google Classroom. I'm sure uh, those who have started, uh, most, of, most of the people, as far as I know, those who have started the online uh, teaching uh, during this pandemic, um, they just started with Google Classroom. Uh, probably they didn't have any other infrastructure and this Google Classroom uh, uh, absolutely supported uh, such sudden starts. So uh, the Google Classroom is fundamentally um, a Google product. Uh, those who are familiar with Google products can quickly get into this uh, uh, Google Classroom. The learning curve is much um, uh, steeper than your uh, Moodle the intuitive user interface makes you to learn it uh, very quickly. So the advantages here is that, as I said, this is easy to learn. Uh, it easily integrates with a lot of Google apps and websites. So you can, uh, in fact, uh, share, collect, and uh, grade if you are part of the uh, G Suite. You know, G Suite is uh, available for the institutions if, you, if your institution would like to go for a license. Uh, all of them will be coming as a bundle. And there are some negatives, uh, the integration with uh, some of the other services like student information services, still it is uh, under development. If you have other uh, tools, which is uh, third-party developed or in-house built tools for the student management system, 
the integration is not that easy. In fact, with any other LMS, most of the institutions will have two uh, systems. One is for the uh, student uh, database maintenance or the student services. The other one is the teaching uh, learning management services like the uh, Moodle. So most of the people, uh, they go with two different uh, uh, URLs in the, in the same server uh, because probably the student databases are uh, more customized based on your uh, requirements. So the bottom line is that it's a great way to manage and organize your uh, teaching management uh, resources, right? So this is uh, how uh, you can see the industries uh, are using the Google Classroom, right? So you can see not only uh, the higher ed, you can see the education management, even the primary, secondary education, right? So you can see some of the uh, social organizations. Uh, even also you can see uh, some of the hospitals and healthcare, uh, they may be using it for their uh, training, uh, in-house training, right? So even the software companies do use it uh, for uh, their own training and benefits, okay? So you can see uh, different types of uh, industries that use the Google Classroom. And you can see, of course, the top country uh, using the uh, Google Classroom is uh, US. And India is not far uh, below. It's uh, still in the fourth position. So you can see uh, just uh, below Canada. That means people have started using uh, more of Google Classroom these days. And you have uh, another tool called ClassKick. This is a purely a web-based application. Uh, this is actually a kind of wrapper in the sense if you don't like the fundamental way of the Google Classroom appearance and other things, you can use uh, the uh, tools like uh, the ClassKick. This can be integrated with uh, your Google Classroom. So the features of uh, Google Classroom plus uh, the uh, ClassKick will help you to uh, have a better classroom management. Uh, this has much more uh, user friendliness in terms of the uh, usability. So you have uh, the screen which is uh, given on your left side. You can see, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, the advantages and disadvantages, like the ability to interact with uh, and adapt instruction to individual students in real time opens up many possibilities for use. Uh, on the negative side, this will not work without a Wi-Fi connection. Of course, this uh, should happen with anything because it's web-based. And the file op uploads are limited to images and PDF. This is a very... Uh, big setback because when you are asking your students to submit probably they may be submitting word files or powerpoint files so that may not be supported in this one but uh, since you are integrating with the google classroom uh, google classroom supports all the types of files so this is not a big um, drawback as it is mentioned uh, the bottom line is that it's a great option for teachers who want to go paperless uh, provide specific feedback and encourage collaboration among students in one-to-one -one, uh, classroom. So this is uh, another uh, screenshot of uh, ClassKick where I just tried to create an assignment. Um, you can see that uh, I just created an assignment for math. It says um, who wants to access this. And also there are some slides which are available. You can make your students to uh, learn what actually the ClassKick is. You don't have to give a training on this. So this is available uh, as part of the class kick once you um, sign up, right? So you can see uh, the interface is totally uh, different. It, it, uh, it is very minimalistic and it looks very rich. And then we have another tool called uh, Schoology. Uh, this is uh, again uh, for the digital classrooms and here there are flexible options for assigning and uh, assessing the work. So you can also uh, assess your works. You can also conduct some, uh, you know, exams. Uh, it can be a little overwhelming to first-time users not familiar with this uh, style of LMS. I think someone has uh, switched on their mic. Please uh, keep it muted. So here, uh, if you want to use uh, the Schoology to the most, you need some ramp-up time and great tasks and assessments. So you need to plan uh, well to conduct your tasks and assessments. So. Once you have that kind of plan, it offers you a rich learning and collaboration experiences, right? So this is a screenshot from uh, Schoology. You can see, um, uh, haha, I mean, you can, you can see instruction tools, communication and collaboration. And this is also available as an app to your mobile and tablets. And it can give you uh, data analytics. And also you can manage your assessments. Right. So this is another uh, screenshot.
All right, so um, sorry for the interruption. Uh, now we'll go ahead with another tool called uh, Classroom Management, which is uh, called BBBB in short. Uh, it's called as Big Blue Button. Okay, uh, our university ha has uh, used this during this time, and we uh, found it extremely good. Um, this is a web conferencing system for online learning. Uh, this is deeply integrated into an LMS. So actually in our university it has been integrated into uh, Moodle. Uh, this offers uh, features like you can conduct online sessions, live sessions, uh, where you, are, you can see how many students are participating. And um, in fact, if you want to uh, record your session, you can record the sessions and uh, store it for the later usage. This is what we have done. Actually, when we go for uh, live classes, we used to conduct online. Also, we uh, uh, use the recording option. So it just records our video and audio along with our PowerPoint slides. And then uh, in addition to that, you will be uh, allowed to give uh, notes, right? So teaching notes, you can do it. Uh, if you have a touch screen, you can actually write using your pen or even use your, use your fingers to Right. For example, the maths, math teachers can write their formulas on uh, the screen itself. So this is open source, but uh, you need to integrate with uh, uh, you know, your, your, your LMS, existing LMS. So that's about the uh, classroom management. When you go for the next type of tool, which is actually content uh, creation uh, tools. All right, so uh, I give a, a 30 seconds break. Please, those who have not subscribed, please subscribe to my uh, channel. Those who are watching in the YouTube. All right, so the content creation. Uh, this is the most essential part, of, part for a teacher. Uh, you cannot just go and sit in front of your uh, uh, camera and start teaching, right? So you need to prepare the contents. If you are uh, your uh, online teaching is like uh, writing on the board and keeping the camera in front of it and you don't have to worry about the content creation, right? So, but most of us uh, uh, do not have that kind of uh, sophistication in uh, uh, recording our screens, right? You don't have a proper studio, you don't have a lighting, you don't have a tripod with a camera and a mic uh, to record all those things. So, you need to create your contents uh, before you go for your live uh, classes. So. It's not about the PowerPoint itself, more than that, right? So you can have a video or interactive contents, and then uh, you can have uh, as simple as the slides or uh, some animated presentations, okay? Particularly for the younger kids, they like to have more animations to understand. Uh, in, in some of the uh, complicated uh, concepts, it's better to create your own contents and uh, you can uh, go online. It is effective when the teachers are uh, creative in presenting the contents in a totally interesting method. Okay, so this needs the teachers' creativity in applying their uh, thoughts before you go for online. Right, so you, the contents has to be created. Uh, please remember that the contents once you create, uh, you own that, and you can repeat it. So you you apply your thoughts the way you teach uh, in the traditional classes. You convert that into an, an online uh, material and go ahead with uh, creating that. So it'll take some time to learn some of the tools. It's not that uh, simple as you have the PowerPoint. Uh, even PowerPoint has grown up uh, very advanced. I'll show you some of the features at the end. It is worth giving an attempt to learn because this is how, as I told you at the beginning, uh, the world has already shifted and the new normal is that every teacher is expected to know about the online uh, tools, particularly the content creation. So if you are unique in creating your content, you can stand different from your peer members. So once you have such kind of uh, contents, you can always engage your students. All right, so let us take the first tool, which is called as the Edu Creations. Here you record your voice uh, on the iPad screen. Uh, this actually helps uh, uh, in the iPad. So if you have the iPad, so you can create the uh, iPad, uh, uh, I mean the contents. Uh, you can have a dynamic uh, video tutorial that uh, your students and your colleagues can access anytime as needed. 
So the pros here is that you get just enough options to make uh, creating uh, presentations fun and effective, which means that uh, you don't have to worry about uh, too much of uh, uh, learning uh, process. Uh, the cons is that uh, there's a one-take creation app, which means that you can save a draft presentation and there's some editing capability, but be ready to get your narration right on the first try. Uh, it's not like a video editing tool where you can uh, edit smaller stuff and then uh, you know um, attach it. So try to go for just one take. Uh, I'm sure most of the traditional teachers like that way because we, we, don't, we are not actors, right? To go for, uh, you know, take one, take two, take three, et cetera. So the bottom line is this is an easy functional way to create presentations on the fly. And uh, this is also another tool which is uh, pretty much uh, known called the Screencast-Matic. I have used this tool uh, for quite a lot of time to record my uh, screen, uh, particularly the online demonstration of any of my uh, software. Uh, um, you know, it records your voice, it records your uh, web, web camera, it records your screen and everything. So he, you can create a high quality uh, screencast without uh, breaking the bank, which means you don't have to invest your money in that. Um, I think it, it allows you to record uh, free for about 15 minutes. I think that's more than enough to uh, create one particular uh, content with a, a particular topic. So the pros is that this is intuitive, uh, which means that it's uh, easy to learn quickly. Um, and then uh, the uh, paid versions are cost effective. Even if you want to go for the full featured version, it's not that uh, costly. Uh, include a full suite of uh, editing tools. On the negative side, it takes time to build a content library, which means that to uh, create a library, it takes some time. So a gallery of standard-based, high-quality screencasts would be uh, helpful for time-starved teachers. And then uh, at the end, uh, a well-designed screen and video recorder that lets teachers and students to focus on creating engaging content from the get-go. So I would strongly recommend if, you, if your uh, need is that you need to record your screen and then just host it somewhere, this is the best option. Go for the Screencast-O-Matic. And you have Adobe Spark. Uh, most of the Adobe tools are licensed, but fortunately this tool is free. Okay, Adobe Spark is uh, free. This is a super flexible uh, design tool for uh, designing uh, the images, videos, and uh, any sites. You can uh, create uh, dynamic content like small animations, which are interactive, which are useful for the students to uh, learn and understand. And uh, it will not take much time for you to learn because this is a web-based app. So you can just go to uh, Adobe Spark, Google it, you can get the link. You just go there, sign up, and then you can start working on immediately. So you can come out with your first content in just about an hour, not even an hour less than that. And then uh, Genially, this is another tool that I have uh, come across, not used much. It's a single platform for all uh, kinds of interactive contents. Uh, you can show off your ideas and turn them into unforgettable uh, stories. So you can have, uh, you can see the features of that. It, it increases the retention of uh, the students when they see the contents and it uh, makes the engagement better with the students and uh, makes the people to uh, you know, uh, keep the things memorable. And also you have uh, what is called as a gamification. So you can make the content available as a game, right? So the students like to have uh, the activities based or the game based learning. So if you have the idea of introducing the activity based learning, and this is one of the uh, choices. All right, this is another uh, screenshot from uh, Genially. So you can see you can start as simple as a presentation last year. Uh, you can have the gamification interactive images where you can say puzzle kind of thing where you can ask them to click on the images and create. And you can also create uh, infographic, whether it is horizontal or in, uh, vertical. And you can make a video presentation as well. And also you can use it for personal uh, uh, branding and you can uh, use it for the social interactions. Right, so uh, that's about the content creation. But what are the challenges in the content creation? Right, um, the, the the problems that I have faced during the content creation are listed here. Uh, I'm just trying to make it as general as possible. Uh, the first one is the audio problem. Right, most of the time you will end up in the audio problem. So either the volume is too low or the surrounding noises are captured in your uh, recording, and the audience will not be able to uh, hear it properly. So this is uh, one of the uh, uh, drawbacks, not only uh, with any particular tool. Any tool you go, this will happen. So you need to be uh, careful about avoiding the noises and uh, 
uh, you know, using the better devices. And video camera problems, yes, uh, the position quality of uh, the uh, problems. Probably you might have seen uh, two, uh, two of my videos, uh, the initial stage in the Google Hangout, you might have seen uh, a slightly lower resolution, that's from my webcam. And uh, I'm posting this through my mobile cam. I'm using my mobile uh, camera as a webcam. Um, so you can use them. There, there are a lot of apps to uh, convert your mobile camera into a webcam. And then editing problems. Of course, if you are having a long video recording and you'll be ending up in um, video editing. So there are a lot of mobile phone apps available that just drag and drop and then uh, use the slider to cut uh, and edit. It, it's possible, but only thing is you need to adapt to that. And then content limitation in target sites. For example, in, my, in our uh, Moodle site, uh, the upload limit is 50 MB. So if you have a long recording, recorded video, you will not be able to upload unless it is either uh, compressed or cut into various pieces, so you cannot upload it. So there is a limitation on the content uploading. And then we have uh, the presentation issues with the students. Of course, uh, you have a particular format being recorded and the students do not have the particular uh, in, uh, decoder. So they will come out with an issue that, sir, we will not be able to uh, read it, or, or we do not uh, hear the audio in the video, or we do not see the video at all, something like that. So and the f don't forget about the copyright uh, violations. Whenever you are using any contents, please give the credits to the you know proper authors. Right, so the next topic is uh, <clears throat> assessment tools. Uh, before we see that, we have to see some of the points related to the assessment tools. This is one of the most challenging tasks in the online uh, teaching, right? Because uh, you need to uh, come out with an assessment uh, to, to see how, I mean, that's, an, that's a yardstick or the measure to see how much uh, your students have learned. So there are varieties of options available online, like multiple choice to essay type. Uh, of course, you can conduct the time limit uh, on the open book test. So you need to be prepared towards that. So you need to address various categories of students. There'll be some students who are very sincere, uh, always uh, try to attempt to uh, uh, the, the, the core of the uh, you know, exams without any uh, external help, right? So that's the uh, one set of students. There are other set of students, okay, it's, this is a time to take help. I can take help. Uh, they can search for any materials available online or the open book uh, options. The, the other category is that always they try to um, uh, you know, put less effort and uh, get more gains. So that's the most challenging part to address. So you need to cater to all these categories of students. And then uh, some of the uh, online solutions which are available for particularly math and science when you design your uh, problems, ensure that those are not available online. Even if they are available, the students will take some time to, uh, you know, convert that into an answer. And then authenticity is a big question. Who is taking the exam? Is it your student or someone else? Uh, in the traditional, you have a lot of mechanisms to check it, right? So you have a hall ticket or the student ID to verify. There are some institutions which are using the biometric, right? So there are possibilities to uh, uh, you know, verify the authenticity of the students. Here, you do not know who is taking the uh, exam. And then finally, uh, if you don't go for the automatic grading options like multiple choice, you have to go with the manual grading and you have to download each and every uh, you know, answer submitted by the students. And of course, during the exam, there is a chance that your students will come out uh, with uh, data connectivity issues. Right? So uh, in, in, in our experience, in our university, we have come out with this experience of data connectivity. There are remote islands where the connectivity is not good. So we need to cater to those students as well when we design our exams in a way that we give more time for those students to submit. Uh, and then meeting the university or uh, accreditation criteria. So university would have, uh, you know, uh, prescribed certain criteria to have a uh, certain type of uh, questions or certain type of uh, assessment. So you need to follow that. Your accreditation criteria like ISO or your NB or NAC might have given some kind of a, a criteria for summative or um, formative assessment. So you need to follow up that as well. All right. So some of the tools which I go through, uh, one is called the Piazza. Right, so this uh, integrates with every uh, LMS. LMS itself has assessment mechanisms. If you want to go additional, you can do such tools. And this is an example of uh, Piazza where I was trying to create one uh, quiz uh, with the, you know, enrollment. Most of the universities uh, data are available with this tool. 
if you want to register, you can register with your school account and uh, I mean the university or the college account, you'll be able to see your college. And then uh, as is, another tool is called the peer grade, which I have used personally in my uh, class. Uh, uh, you know, the advantage is that you can ask the peer members, the students among themselves to evaluate. When they evaluate, they do not know who has submitted. It is an anonymous evaluation. Uh, uh, <clears throat> when I uh, tested this with one of my assignments, it was a big surprise to me that the grading was much more stricter than how I do. The peer members evaluation happens in a way that it's so sincere, so seriously uh, my students have attempted. And you can see that, uh, 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 I think I have not given my uh, screenshot, this, this, my students have attempted in a way that no one has got more than 80%. So that's how they uh, grade each other. So the anonymity was there, so they wanted to give their best. So only thing is you need to set up the question and the rubrics, they'll be able to follow and do that. And then another tool called Socrative. Uh, this also supports formative and summative uh, assessment uh, in terms of polls and uh, quizzes. Right, this is the screenshot from Socrative. All right, so you can uh, see a quiz sample uh, taken in that particular uh, tool called Socrative. Okay, so uh, coming out of the assessment tools, what is next in the online teaching tools? is the live communication tools, right? So most of the online classes other than the BBB, uh, you need to uh, have some live communication tools. Some of them, there are a lot of tools, but I have just listed only uh, four here. One is the Google Hangout Meet, uh, which uh, this uh, particular session has been hosted. And you have Teams, Microsoft Teams, that is also useful uh, if your institution has uh, signed up for the Microsoft uh, 360, Office 365 you'll be able to host a live session in uh, Microsoft Teams as well. And then we have other known tools like WeChat Work, which works up to 300 participants. And then Lock, uh, which is a chat, calendar, and conferencing tool. It's up to 100 participants. In addition to that, you know that we have Zoom. Uh, Zoom is also useful, uh, though there were some reports uh, raised about the security, but then our university has used the licensed uh, I mean, licensed with the Zoom, and we have used for a lot of online uh, classes, not only classes, even for the presentations. We have uh, sessions where the students have to present uh, for their uh, assessment. So we conducted using the Zoom sessions. It all went on uh, very well. All right, so I told you at the beginning that I'll be uh, uh, giving you some of the tools that are going to be very handy, um, <clears throat> particularly the Microsoft PowerPoint. Okay, with the latest PowerPoint 2019 uh, version, you can see a lot of advancements. Even 2016 do not have some of them, but 2019 has a lot of uh, advanced uh, you know, features. Some of the basic things that you can even find in 2016 version is that it can capture the audio or video along with the slides. I'm sure people might have not experimented that. I have given a small demo in my uh, YouTube. There's a link given. Uh, you can see the link just, just below this. Uh, you click on that, I have given a demo on how to use this feature to record your uh, audio and video along with every slide. This is beautiful uh, feature that I have used in my some of, some of my online classes, where for every slide, what you speak, that only will be recorded. Okay, so you have a lot of time to take a break between the slides. So if you want to talk only for the slide, you talk, just take a break, again, you talk. But if you want to just go flow in a continuous way, just keep pressing next slide, it keeps recording. So that's a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, option or feature in uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. So you can create the contents quickly. You don't have to depend on any third-party tool. You, all of you must be having uh, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint or your institution might be having, so you can utilize them. So you don't have to worry about the conversion to any other formats because every student can uh, open this. And if, if not, if they don't have the Microsoft PowerPoint, your students, you can convert that into PPS the PowerPoint show, and then you can upload, even without uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, they'll be able to see that, all right? And then finally, there is another option where you can convert all the slides into a video. So this will go in a sequence, depending on how much you speak for each slide. It'll go as a MP4 video, you can convert that in, you can, you can upload it. So that is also possible. So don't forget to uh, click on this uh, demo. I'll be sharing the slides at the end of the uh, webinar, so you can always have a look at it, or already if you, ha if you are uh, there in my channel, you can always go to uh, this uh, video, which I have already uploaded. Right, so um, 
There is another tool called Audacity, where if you want to only record the voice, uh, this is a beautiful tool. Suppose if you want to have some kind of fun by adding some kind of uh, backdrop of music, you can very well do that with uh, Audacity. Right? This is uh, learning is very, very simple. You can just uh, record with your built-in microphone. And of course, VLC player, most of, most of us might be knowing about the VLC players, where uh, it's a well-known uh, player. It has a wonderful conversion feature that probably people might have not used. So if you, are, uh, if, you are, if you are recording a video in a particular format, and you are, uh, you know, the destination, your, your LMS doesn't accept it, if it accepts a particular format like MP4 or say AVI or MOV, you can convert from one format to another format in uh, VLC. And also this will help you to compress your files. You can actually compress your files, right? So if your MP4 is too big to be uh, uploaded, then you can apply the compression in, uh, just convert or, uh, you know, compress, you can do the compression in VLC as well. Right, so for the final thought before I uh, end up, before uh, I, I go through the slides, please, those who have not uh, uh, given the subscription to my channel, please give it. I'll be sharing a lot of educational tools, okay? Uh, please uh, click on the subscription. Right, so now we'll have the recommendation. If you are setting up uh, an online teaching learning platform for your institution or for your own courses, first keep a baseline LMS tool. You need to uh, uh, keep a tool that supports your uh, requirements. For example, if you don't have uh, any money to invest, go for the open source like uh, uh, Moodle or Google Classroom. And you, if, even if you don't have any uh, servers, these tools can be hosted in their own servers, okay? To some, some availability, I mean, to some extent you can host in their own servers, okay? And then uh, a content creation tool. So you can recommend as simple as the PowerPoint, or you can use any uh, tools like the Adobe uh, Spark, or uh, keep some of the tools depending on your needs. And then use one or more assessment tools to engage students. So you need to assess them. So once you deliver the contents, you need to assess them. So how you're going to assess? Based on your requirement, you can choose your tool for the assessment. And then engaging the students with various tools and techniques is a key. So please remember uh, the e-moderation five-stage model. Please remember you have to ensure that you run through various features. For example, creating a forum, creating an audio interactive sessions or video interactive sessions try to engage them, right? So that's most challenging. Uh, just apply some techniques to engage. For example, I used to have uh, weekly uh, briefing sessions where I want all my students to come online on a particular uh, day or at a particular time. So they'll be available. I'll be uh, connecting with them through video or audio. Uh, since many students did not have much of, uh, you know, data connectivity, I mean, uh, much bandwidth of data connectivity, so I prefer the audio interaction, and then they also prefer the audio interaction, also the text interaction. So try to engage with them, then get to know about what's happening with the students. And then assessment uh, needs to be completely uh, different from face to face. So keep it in mind, you cannot uh, create questions that you have created for your face to face, something like describe, define, okay? So please don't uh, have such questions. If you have, just forget about that. Okay, so the direct answers, any questions that leads to direct answers, your students are smarter than you, they can easily pick up the solutions online, they can just copy paste. Okay, so in that case, uh, if you are not sure about that, you can always use some of the features like the plagiarism, which, which are uh, something like an additional uh, plugin into most of the uh, LMS, you can use them. And then mostly, you may have to conduct a time limited open book tests. So this is one way of getting the assessments done where you, I mean, you cannot tell them that this, I mean, the students don't copy or, uh, you know, if you copy, you will lose marks. And these, these things you cannot say now, right? So you have to allow them to go on, uh, on open book, right? When they go open book, the only uh, restriction that you can make is the time limitation. So make it as time limited open book. Uh, give, give the questions in a way that they have to apply uh, their 
whatever they have understood from the whole the whole course through the online uh, teaching uh, whatever you have conducted so far from there they have to at least know uh, this has been taken from this particular part of the lecture so they have to go through and then find out to some extent they should have that at least the connectivity between those topics so keep such things and uh, gradually it will improve okay because of the sudden shift we have to start like this and slowly uh, when you create the interactive contents then and there you will be assessing them uh, in terms of the interactive uh, contents like interactive images or interactive animations or whatever it is all right so uh, i have come to the end i think uh, yeah we are on time i'm happy to answer your questions Participants, you can either post your questions in the chat box, or you can. It's better to post your questions in the chat box. Just since we have too many participants, it's better to so post your questions. There is a question I can say, which is the best content creation tool for math and science. The questions. Okay, so you want to have uh, equations and diagrams. As I told you, you can use uh, the tool that has the uh, you know iPad access. in fact you can also use the big blue button where you can draw your uh, uh you know equations and anything that you on on the screen so you don't have to have a stylus pen you can use your uh, you know fingers to draw it okay uh as simple as a powerpoint you can in fact use a powerpoint itself to draw your equations on a screen okay when you're recording keep a blank screen white screen or a black screen use the pen at the bottom take it and draw whatever you want that will be recorded okay so there are a lot of tools for mind maps um flow charts you can uh, see the diagrammatic tools like draw.io that's also an online tool for drawing diagrams you can draw any types of flow charts that's also again open source freeware so web based you don't have to install i mean of course there is a desktop version you can install as well Uh, so you can use that for your draw drawing purposes and of course when you draw again use uh, tools like screen castmatic to record your screen and then host it in your uh, lms all right so which live platform tool is uh, user friendly for teachers like uh, zoom All right, so you would like to uh, know which tool is so user friendly like Zoom. Uh, you can use uh, Google Hangout Meet, uh, or if your uh, institution has a license with the big blue button, you can always have the live sessions with that. That's pretty much user friendly. Okay, there is a question. Does uh, Schoology LMS offer a free account? If yes, then how many students can be added to it? I uh, signed up with my official ID it allowed me to create a course I have practically not checked with my uh, students because we already have an LMS so we didn't I mean I didn't practically check it but I'm sure it is going to uh, support uh, many students at least like few hundreds because it's a web based application so you can give a try by giving uh, I mean registering using your school account your official account Okay, so there's a question about all tools that are discussed are open source. If yes, what are they? Most of the tools that I have discussed are open source, or it allows the teachers to have free account. Okay, and even the students. If an institution wants to have, probably that might ask for a license. But some most of the tools what I have taught you is just free for the teachers. Okay, even the screen castmatic it allows you to record 15 minutes of uh, recording uh, in uh, 720p. uh your complete screen with your complete webcam uh your complete mic everything is recorded so no worries about it so for assessment purpose what type of tools can also be used okay so, so while we are also of, uh, yeah there are plenty of tools in in fact i've been also experimenting on that uh there was one method called proctoring okay proctoring is okay. a method where uh, the students have to install a plugin uh, on google chrome or any other browsers where it will uh, take a photograph and the video of the surroundings as well before they start the exams so they have to ensure that they are sitting alone and not only the video and the uh, photographs 
but this also uh, uh, you know allows people to ensure that the authentic person is taking up the examinations and also we have uh, uh, there's a website called the exam.net where uh, the students can write your answer they, they can write the answers in a paper and they can just take a picture in, a, in their mobile phone uh, there will be a qr code that will be connected to your uh, quiz so you just have to post the questions and the answers will be automatically taken i mean the the transition uh, i mean uh, the transformation from your uh, uh, mobile phone to your desktop is much simpler using the tools like exam.net there are plenty of tools believe me for the assessment there are a lot of tools only thing is you have to check based on your requirements sir what are the tools for uh, practical classes practical classes all right so which practical you mean what is the subject sir, like uh, science analytical uh, practicals like uh, science uh, stream students okay uh, science for the physics and all there are a lot of tools software available but i'm not sure but i'm a computer science man uh, if you are able to show any demonstration using your camera if the people understand through the camera it is good enough but if you want to make the people to work on uh, the experimentation uh, i'm sure for the physics there are a lot of tools available uh, i have still not explored much of them but i know uh, my my student i mean my uh, daughter is attending <clears throat> some of the uh, practical classes through some of the tools our university is actually teaching that uh, good morning sir yeah good morning so thank you for your nice presentation uh, sir uh, can we check uh, the plagiarism uh, if the students are submit the assessment through the moodle other than moodle is there any option to check uh, plagiarism all right see uh, in moodle the default uh, don't have that comfortable uh, zone but there are a lot of apis available itself <clears throat> for example there is a tool called jplag okay there is a jplag okay. there is turnitin turnitin is going to it's a free this, uh, similarity the jplag is free okay you have to install them and ask your administrator to integrate it as part of the moodle so when you okay. submit your assignment you can obviously select uh, the jplag so the students will be able to check their plagiarism plagiarism before they submit using the turnitin and when it comes to you you can easily compare who is the source who is the target what is the similarity between them uh even is to check uh, image file also in jpeg you see image it. files no image not files just... are visual contents it's not visual possible. contents you have to check through your eyes because as of i am from mathematics so, so yeah, students yeah, are uh, it's not able to type in uh, in uh, that no. uh, file that's why they written in the and they took photo and they are uh, forwarding that's true so we are <laughs> we are very difficult to check that's true so in what fact, about big blue sir is the there any issues purpose? you know when, when there are some diagrams to yeah. be drawn in our courses as well yeah. i asked the students to draw in their hands but that's what i said that's one of the challenges in assessment manual grading that okay. that's going to take a lot of time i'm sure that's not a very far uh, from now com comparing the you know images of two different uh, answers of course with the deep learning and all it is it is possible or it is already existing i've still not explored it to be honest okay okay thank you so much yeah so let me see if there are any questions being typed by the uh, oh yeah there are a lot of questions is peer grade assessment tool useful for higher education and secondary yes of course you can use it for higher secondary as well as uh, the higher education okay so it's all about you have to define the question you have to define the rubrics and share it with your students uh, there's a time for submission there's a time for grading once the submissions are closed the grading will start it will automatically assign for example each has to be evaluated by two students or three students you can set that it is possible Okay, so those who are watching again, um, a request from my side: please subscribe to my channel and the YouTube. Sir, uh, your presentation was very nice. Thank you. Sir, sir, please. Yeah, I can hear you. Do you listen? Yeah. Hi, thank you, sir. Yeah, I am Hari Gram from Indian uh, National Tribunal, Amar Kantang, Madhya Pradesh. Okay. Your yeah, presentation was very nice, and uh, I would like to have only one clarification. This is the best tool for you know, uh, evaluating the people uh, for high in higher education. Come again, I didn't get your question properly. Sir? Yeah, tell me please. 
sir which is the best tool for evaluating the people in the higher education system evaluating what evaluating people ah uh, evaluating their uh, teaching quality of the students in teacher education system okay so far they have not invented a tool to evaluate the quality of the students <laughs> uh -huh. this uh, the quality of the students can only be uh, evaluated by a teacher so that's yeah, exactly. that's through the assessment and uh, that's through the classroom participations but then you know you can uh, to some extent you can measure their uh, quality for example in uh -huh. moodle we used to see their activity right? okay Every sir uh -huh. log reports activity uh, mm -hmm. how many times mm -hmm. they have uh, clicked on that particular activity uh, i mean i can take the whole semester and see uh, how long they have been mm -hmm. active okay in terms of the uh, infographics like uh, the histograms if i see a big uh -huh. gap and suddenly if there is a spike uh -huh. only during the examination then i can say that this student uh -huh. is not active uh, for the entire duration uh -huh. right so uh -huh. uh, this is one of the measures okay sir uh -huh. but you know if you know i mean if the students know that you are going to measure only based on this what they will do is every uh -huh. day they will open uh, the moodle uh, 10 times they will click or 20 times they will click and then they will just uh -huh. vanish right so there is no standard measures the only thing is you have to yes. uh, evaluate but their Thank you very much. Okay, there is a question in my YouTube. Can uh, Windows is a tool to? Mohan sir, can we wind up the session? Uh, which automatically name I U P C. Okay, can I synchronize the tool to Google Classroom or T C S I N Classroom? Uh, I have not experimented it, but um, if, if that tool is web-based or if that tool is running in your uh, desktop itself, it is possible to integrate uh, as as simple as sharing your screen. Okay? Or if it is available on the screen, I suggest you to record the screen, demonstrate, and just host it in your Google Classroom. So physics uh, virtual lab is the answer for uh, someone asked about the physics. So the name of the tool is physics <coughs> virtual lab. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Also the feedback link is being shared. Thank you for all your comments. Nice comments. Uh, I really uh, feel happy for all your appreciation. Thank you, sir. Mohan sir. Yep. Can you hear me now? Oh yes. Jagdish sir, you are. I think. Uh... Mohan sir. Yes. Can we end up the session, sir? Yes, sure. We we are having few doubts. We, if you could just clarify your uh, sorry, share your mail ID, then people can contact. Okay, just before mail. wind up, there is one question from Dr. Govindra Srinivas. Is it possible to create animated content for our students? Yes, it is possible using the tools like Adobe Spark. You can create uh, animated contents, and uh, there are a lot of other tools available as well. But this is free. Adobe Spark is free. You can create the animated tools. Yeah. Right, thank you. Uh, Adobe, sir. Please take over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just so now we will just move on to the last part of the session, vote of thanks. We would like to greatly appreciate and thank today's resource person, Dr. Morgan S., for his enlightening session. Hope you had a, a good session, a good learning experience. Of course, you will have a few doubts and clarifications. You just explore, you will, you will get more information. Just have contact with the resource person and he will uh, guide you hereafter. Right. So, uh, I would like to thank our revered the Secretary Maharaj for giving us the opportunity, our Principal Anna, and all the staff members, especially Shivashankar Anna and Ayyip Anna, who have helped us throughout this session. And for your information, I have posted the feedback link in the chat box as well as in the WhatsApp groups. Just fill in, make sure you don't make any, commit any mistakes in typing your name and designation. So once it is filled, then you cannot change it, and uh, it's not possible to give another certificate to you. Next, thank you, thank you all for the participation. Thank you.
All right. So thank you, uh, sir. Thanks for the opportunity to interact with so many people from India. I'm really happy. I think uh, even people are from other countries as well. Uh, since the time was limited, so I had to rush up. Uh, I'm sure if you have any other queries, I, my email is there. I'll be sharing my slides. You can always interact with me. You can send me your queries. I'll be happy to uh, reply. Thank you so much. Sir, please, please send thank your. You, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you.